Hello, guys. Welcome to another edition of our Gridiron Football Player of the Week show. I'm your host, Jace Lejeune, and with me is, as always, our Gridiron Football Player of the Week. And for this time, week seven, we're going to go back to the running back position. And I'm so excited to announce, because I call their games every week, that Episcopal parents are saying, Jace, when are we finally going to get a Gridiron Football Player of the Week? And Reed Chauvin finally gets it done for the Episcopal Knights. So congratulations, Reed, for winning Gridiron Football Player of the Week. Before I let uh, Reed and uh, Coach Bourgeois, who also uh, is joining us as well, talk about that performance, um, we have to really talk about the performance first to give an appreciation of what Reed really did. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, uh, you look at the scoreboard, I mean, 42 points, uh, Reed Chauvin <laughs> pretty much, uh, six touchdown runs in the game, scored all the nice touchdowns and a 42-22 win over Sarter Charter. Carried the football a whole lot, too, 30 times for 192 yards and the six touchdowns. And it made all the difference in the world. Gets a really good Sar Charter team on the road. So I'm going to go with you first, Coach Bourgeois. Yeah, the front row seat uh, of his performance. So talk about Reed's performance and just – just describe what kind of workhorse he's really been for this night's offense. Yeah, first of all, we really needed that performance. Uh, you know, first time we've played Slaughter Charter, so unfamiliar territory. And just to take the opening drive and to get seven points on the board, on the road, you always want to establish that early momentum. Uh, so, we, you know, very thankful that that drive happened. But then, you know, Slaughter responds back with a touchdown, two-point conversion, so they go back up 8-7. So we figure in, we in for a shootout. So, uh, you know, we got to have all hands on deck. But, you know, Reed had the hot hand. You know, it's 30 carries. It seems like a lot. But really, he looked fresh from his first carry to his 30th carry. So I really, I think he probably could have carried a couple more times for us on that night. But, you know, thankfully, we were able to take control in the fourth quarter and not uh, be able to, uh, to continue to use Reed. But it's a big night. There's no doubt. I've only seen it two other times in Episcopal history. The late great Jimmy Williams had a six touchdown performance and another all state player, Mike Henry. So Reed joined some very elite wow. company in the Episcopals uh, running back history. Uh, but it's a big night, you know, uh, 192 yards for us and ball control, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, putting us in good situations. No long, no third and longs was our goal. And just to keep feeding this guy because he was, he had a great night and uh, he's been showing a lot of good vision not only from the wing T formation, but also from the shotgun formation. So he's just showing a lot of versatility for us. He also caught a screen pass for 14 yards. So we'll throw that in there. So 200 yards of total offense, not a bad night for us, but it's definitely a, a great night and one that Episcopal is going to remember forever. But also this guy, well-deserving of it, uh, he'll remember for as well. Yeah, a lot of touchdown calls that night uh, for VSN, for, for Reed Chauvin that night. But what a great performance against a really good Sar Char team on the road. Uh, Reed, you pretty much were, the, like I said earlier, the bell cow of the night's offense. And would you ever imagine, We were, me and Taylor were talking about, this has to be, I mean, I know the Pistols have some really good running backs, but I know this has to be at least a record or tying a record. So, um, like, no one early, like, hey, I got two touchdowns here. I got – I got three touchdowns. Like, wait a minute, I got I got four. Like, did you have a feeling like, hey, I was just one of those nights, just giving the ball uh, near the goal line, and just, just let me work, right? Yeah, actually, uh, it's like my third touchdown, and I was I talked to Nathan. I'm like, I might actually get four this time because I've been wanting to get four for so long. I always hit that oh, benchmark at three. And I got four, and it's opportunities kept happening throughout the night. And it, I mean, it's not possible on the offensive line, man. I mean. They wanted it just as bad as I, if I did. I mean, you can see, like, there's multiple plays at the goal line where they're just pushing me forward, trying to get me more touchdowns. I mean, I got it's, it's all of them, too, really. Yeah, you're a smart running back. You know, uh, definitely giving your your guys some credit on the offensive line, and uh, hopefully uh, you treat them uh, maybe to some canes or something like that, maybe after the game uh, for their hard work. And, uh, and Coach, what, uh, going back to what Reed just said on the offensive line, um, I feel like when you rush for 190 yards – and, and Reed has six touchdowns. It's more of not just Reed doing that. It's, it's a group effort in order to do that. So um, what do you have to say about the offensive line for them to open those holes and really be a part of this award as well, just as much as Reed? Yeah, there's no doubt. This is a definitely a team award. But, you know, I'm really proud of this offensive line. You know, if you asked me at the beginning of the season, 
you know, an area of concern is definitely the offensive line, losing some starters and just not having that overall experience like we've had in the past. But this group has really gelled together from week one to week seven. And I just think the good thing there is still learning. I mean, you, uh, there's nothing perfect out there. We still see mistakes on film, but I'm really impressed with the eagerness of this group to learn and want to continue to get better. And like I said, and when you have three senior running backs to run behind these guys, that always helps the offensive line as well. But, you know, Reed and them have to be patient. They know that it's a new group. So I really give Reed and those senior running backs credit for not, you know, putting all that pressure on the O-line. It's a, it's a team effort. And, uh, you know, all, all together these guys are working hard for the ultimate goal. And they don't really care who's scoring a touchdown, who's getting the yards. They're very unselfish uh, because – out of the three, two of them always have to be blocking. So, I mean, that's a credit to these guys that if they're not getting the ball, they're not watching the play, they're getting involved in helping their teammates out. And that's that's what I think this group is so special. And uh, going back to Reed here, I know uh, really the two of y'all the last two years, I mean, you you and Braden George were just a really good one-two punch. Now going to this year with Braden being gone, a lot of people were focusing on you to be that, that bell cow, right? But what do you have to say about, about guys like, like Nathan Sanchez, David Olin, that are counterparts with you that have they've stood I mean stood up, you know, they haven't really played as much of that, that wing back role. What do you have to say about their performance and how those two players really open things up for you for you in the running game? Yeah, I mean both of them definitely stepped up like throughout the whole year, starting in the summer. I mean, I don't wanna throw no disrespect towards Nathan, but if you asked me sophomore year, freshman year, would Nathan be a captain this year, I would be I wouldn't I wouldn't say yes, but he's really stepped up, not just on the field, but through a, like a team perspective, like helping guys out, making sure they're in the right place all year long. I think that's just something very valuable about this team that can uh, keep us going a long way through the season, eventually in, deep in the playoffs. And uh, for David Olin, you know, he just got off that injury and just seeing him move like just as good, if not probably better than last year. It's just unbelievable how he can recover from that and still be at the top of his game. I mean, both those guys have really proved themselves all year long and super proud of both of them. Absolutely, Coach. I know we talk – I mean, uh, Reed's definitely an unselfish player. He likes to thank his teammates, and that was makes him such a great, uh, really student athlete for you all. But let's brag about Reed a little bit too. Uh, for you, Coach, I know ever since I've been with you uh, calling games with RC Sports now, we've had a really good running back tandem. It's like, okay, like these two guys, Carmouche, the arm, and like – they're going. What they're going to do at running back? You sub in Braden George, Reed Chauvin. When Braden George is going like, oh, what are y'all going to do to compliment Reed Chauvin? You get these other running backs. But you coach a lot of really good running backs, coach. Um, and you just mentioned some of the names earlier. But where does Reed just uh, rank among this list uh, for you? And uh, just what kind of running back uh, should colleges really be looking at when they look at a guy like Reed Chauvin? I think you start off with his work ethic, um, not only on the football field, but, you know, so valuable is the weight room, is the classroom. I mean, he really is the total package. He's a guy you're not going to have to worry about with grades. Uh, you're not going to worry about him. You got to kick him out the weight room, you know. Uh, yeah. you, have to get here, you have to get here 15 minutes early to try to beat him here. He's just one of them guys that tremendous work ethic. Uh, so there's no doubt in my, my mind he's going to be successful in any aspect of life outside of Episcopal, just because of the person he is. He's got great parents, got a great support team, and he's just always wanting to get better and improve. And as long as you want him to become that as a person in any aspect of life, you're going to be very successful in, in whatever you do. But, you know, overall, the size and the strength, you know, he's showing ability to go out in space and catch the ball in the air. So he's really been a very versatile back. Uh, you know, we've been blessed with a lot of great running backs here at Episcopal that have gone on to college and, you know, Reed's right there with him. There's no doubt about it. And uh, I think that's what makes Episcopal unique is, you know, if you're the next running back in line, you know, you knew you got, you got that hunger, you got that want. You're going to work as a freshman and a sophomore knowing, hey, one day that's going to be me. And Reed saw that early on. And you can just tell that with his work ethic and all, and that's why he got on the field as a sophomore and his junior, and that's why he's thriving as a senior right now. Because he visualized this early on in his high school career that one day this is going to be him. And that's why we've been fortunate that we do have good leaders like Reed is leading our current group of freshmen in Southmore. So our expectations is, hey, 
you know, even though how great of a player Reed is, that next guy next year, he's going to, he's got to fill those shoes. We're not going to ask who's going to fill them. We're expecting the next guy to step on in and fill those shoes. And, and that's what makes this a unique place. And I think that's why our running back room has been so successful over the years is that want to be the next guy and uh, try to go above and beyond. Absolutely, Coach. I mean, like you said, great student athlete over a 4.0 GPA. He's been really productive over his high school career. I mean, going to really his third year, uh, really as a big-time contributor, as a starter for this football football team. But not only have you been all – really all district guy and only been a really great running back for Episcopal, but you've also been a, uh, a accomplished student athlete. You talk about uh, a state champion power lifter as well. Reed, I mean, you've squatted with over 600 pounds, won a lot of state championships there. Uh, Coach Bourgeois says like, it's, it's really tough trying to get you, get the kick you out of the weight room, just how devoted you are to it. So how does that, help you as a running back uh i've always said on the broadcast so you're always falling for you if you're always falling forward for yards or extra yards so how is really weightlifting and being in the weight room how has that helped you with your game as a running back i definitely think the uh, number one thing is just confidence really you know just going out on that field thinking or just knowing that like you're the best or not the best the strongest player out there I mean, it, it just helps you a lot because you like when you go see somebody to hit, you're like, I'm stronger than this dude. I'm going to be able to hit him. And I mean, obviously, the strength plays a big part in every single down. I mean, you need strength for football and just the controlled aggression apart. Like I said, like at powerlifting, you can't get too amped up or, or um, you know, when you go hit a lift or else you're just you're going to fail it because you're not going to fall back on that technique. And that's exactly what you need for football. Literally, like if you get too worked up and you go in too hot, you're going to miss a block, miss an assignment, not think the right play. And it's, it's just really facilitated that for me. I mean, 35, you're getting close to 3,500 yards, uh, 60 touchdowns is what I'm seeing. So that's, that's some pretty, uh, pretty incredible numbers there for over a career. Uh, coach, um, now tonight, I mean, we're just talking about it. Like we're about to uh, go to <laughs> to the game tonight. This game is being recorded. I mean, this uh, should be recorded the morning of or earlier in the afternoon of the game, but this is senior night uh, for Reed Chauvin and a lot of these other seniors on this on this football team night against Northeast. So and there's a good chance y'all get a chance to have another playoff game here at Memorial Field. But uh, you said going into the season, this is one of your biggest senior classes that you had at Episcopal. So um, what does it mean for these guys tonight to, you know, uh, have this experience, but also put a good showing in front of the fans, knowing that this is the last regular season home game of the year? You know, you can have big senior classes and you don't have a camaraderie. You might have people pulling in different directions because the class is different. But, you know, with this group, I think what makes them really unique is there's 19 of them, but really they all they all have that common goal. They all want to win. Uh, they want to do what it takes to win. And they don't care who gets the credit. The end result is the scoreboard. And that's what I'm going to miss most about this group is, you know, going into the year, you're excited about 19 seniors, but then all of a sudden senior night's here and you're like, what's next year going to look like when you lose these 19 seniors? But I'm not going to try to look towards next year. I want to enjoy the moment with these guys. I've been telling them all season they've been a special group and I want them to enjoy it, slow everything down, enjoy each game, enjoy each night. And we're already at week eight. So, you yeah. know, like I said, breathe everything in tonight and, you know, there'll be time for tears and, and, and things like that, but enjoy your family and just enjoy your last regular season game at Episcopal and, you know, just think back and reflect on these four years and what it's meant to you and, uh, you know, just go out there and be the team you've been all year. It's a special night. Same time, when the kickoff happens, it's still going to be a football game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, we can talk about the good old days uh, when they're here right now. Let's just concentrate on tonight and become a better football team and uh, but also enjoy this group because they are a special group. Absolutely, you get a chance. Uh, next, oh, you just got a couple games left on the regular season, and then you got the playoffs after that. Uh, just to wrap, I mean, just pretty much cap it off because I know we're running out of time here. Uh, but Reed, for you, uh, get I mean, talk about the recruiting process for you a little bit, and uh, for you, and for college coaches, give your pitch. Why should college coaches go and recruit you to play for their university next fall? Uh, I think I'm going to work harder than anybody else. I mean, 
once I'm, on, once I'm on a team, if the coach takes a chance on me, I'm not just going to waste my time over there. I'm going to work my, my hardest every single day. Uh, just, like, use my time efficiently. efficiently. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely, Reed. And, uh, and I have to say that in this way, uh, we want to thank everybody that's participated in a Great Iron Football Player of the Week poll. Uh, this is our really our second straight year we're really doing this, and it's coming more and more popular as we speak. So popular, in fact, that uh, the Episcopal community uh, <laughs> actually shut down our website. So there we go. With so many, so many votes, uh, I know that Reed uh, Episcopal fans really came back and support you, helped you win this award. The reason why we're doing this interview right here, you had over 19,000 votes. For you to win so uh coach reed real briefly talk about the the support of this episcopal community and what this community really means and we talk so much coach and, and reed about this really being a family uh not really more of a community but really a family atmosphere at episcopal you can tell so what do you have to say about just the support the community and uh there's the support going out and building for for reed to win this award i mean that's what we're, we're really cool about episcopal it's pre-K through 12. In fact, I teach pre-K four. I mean, I teach in a lower school, so I get to see uh, the variety of ages and skill levels and just get to communicate throughout the school and keep up with people throughout. But even read, you know, our seniors have kindergarten buddies, so they're able to relate with someone down lower than them that looks up to them. But yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, we got great support here. Doesn't matter what events being taken place. There's always an event here on campus. And attendance is always great. Uh, whatever sporting event, it could be play, band, choir, uh, anything that goes on. You know, we do have tremendous support for each other. Absolutely, Reed. What What is your message to the fans that, that came up and support you and allowed you to win this award this week? Appreciate y'all for voting for me. I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of votes. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a lot of votes, and we appreciate everybody that's that's voted, voted, donated. Uh, donations also went to votes as well, um, but um, it was goes towards the Gridiron Football All-American Bowl game, which Reed will also happen to be playing in at the end of the year once the senior year is done. So, Reed, talk about real briefly about the bowl game, getting a chance to play in that. Braden was actually the MVP of it last year, so you get a chance at that final high school game as well at the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, I'm just blessed to be able to play football after my high school career. I mean, hopefully it'll, it'll continue to the college level, but if not, it's just still another opportunity to play against the sport that I love. So really appreciative and, you know, just got to try to follow in Braden's footsteps and win that MVP. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Duff. But you got someone Braden doesn't have. You won the Gridiron Football Player of the Week, someone he's never yeah. done. So there yeah. you go, Reed. And then, uh, Coach, finally wrapping it up, uh, two more games, well, three more games left, week eight coming up right here. So you got this week. Then you got just some game everybody likes to circle their their calendars for. Some school named Dunham, I guess. Uh, I think I've heard of it before. <laughs> then you got Capital uh, to end the season. So um, this team is looking pretty good. They're, I believe, number two in the power rankings right now. So what's the focus for this team to uh, conclude the regular season and head into the playoffs on, on a really strong footing? Right, and that's what we talked about, you know, uh, being this late in the season, you control your own destiny for anything that you want to do. You know, if you want to host – Playoff games, you, you keep winning. I mean, it's just real, real simple math. So, uh, but just to be in this position after week eight is something that uh, coaches and our senior players, you know, look forward to. But at the same time, like I said, I like for these guys just to enjoy the moment, enjoy the night, and just take these games one at a time. Next week we'll be here before you know it. But we got senior night tonight, so let's focus on senior night and enjoy being at home one last time in a regular season. And read your last message about what kind of Knights football team. I guess your message to uh, really the rest of the season to Knights fans, and uh, I guess a message to uh, Division Three Select about what kind of Knights football team they'll be running into if they face y'all in the playoffs. We, we're gonna go a long way. That's the goal. Everybody's got that same goal. So you know, when uh, people see us on the schedule, hopefully they're like, all right, they're a real team. They're they're gonna play because we got everything this year. We we plan on going a long way. Absolutely, guys. Well, enjoy tonight. Enjoy Senior Day. And, of course, uh, I'm sure Knights fans are asking, all right, what does Reed get? What What is this award for winning player of the week? Well, he's actually going to get a Letterman jacket patch, and we're actually getting those mailed right now. So it's going to be a blue Letterman jacket patch. It's going to say Gridiron Football Player of the Week. So Reed will get a chance to put that on his Letterman jacket. So 
that will be coming in pretty uh, shortly. And then also, uh, if you won Gridiron Football Player of the Week, you're all mad candidate for Gridiron Football Player of the Year. So we will be in the voting towards the end of the year as well. We do a Gridiron Football Player of the Year nominees. But thank you all guys so much. I know it's game day. I know it's pretty hectic senior night and all that. So appreciate a couple minutes of you all time. Uh, of course, Coach Bourgeois. Obviously, for all y'all done for Gridiron Football, we really appreciate it. And then Reed, congratulations, man. Well-deserving of the award. Six touchdowns. That's nothing to sneeze at. I play NCAA 25 Madden. I don't think I can score six touchdowns in the video game, so no matter what level. So congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but congratulations to Reed. And, uh, guys, we'll, we'll see you all next time on a Gridiron Football Player of the Week show. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, guys, for what you do for high school football. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you all.